Hey guys, so entirely different video today. This is about equipment, and I'm gonna probably open the box back up here. This is kind of the how I do my videos, how I put things together. And I got a new lens, and I've been dealing with camera stuff for years. Lens quality matters if you care about your images. So I got the new Sigma 24-70 f 2.8 DG DN2. So uh, should be, yep, for the Sony mount, Sony E, e mount. So Sigma is kind of an independent lens manufacturer and they can do the same lens for multiple camera systems, Canon, Sony, Nikon. And I've got a bigger trip coming up. And I, and I noticed in my last few trips I've done, I've been using the same lens. It's a 50 millimeter, which has an amazing, it has amazing quality, very good background blur, but the range is complex. Indoors, it's too too close, has too much zoom, um, and it's not wide enough for smaller spaces. And just out in the outdoors, sometimes the 50 millimeter doesn't have enough range. So I wanted something a bit more flexible, 24 to 70, 2.8. The lower the number, the kind of the more light, the more background blur you're going to get and I've never purchased a Sigma before. I've either purchased Canon lenses for my Canon system when I use that, and I have a Sony A7R5 now, and I only purchased the Sony lenses, and I have noticed that you have to, you don't have to do anything, right? But if you, there's a big quality difference between their very expensive G lens and then their, their lower quality ones. I was about ready to abandon my Sony system until I bought the kind of high-end 50 millimeter uh, what, G Master lens. Um, the quality is significantly different. It's, the difference in Sony is larger than it is in Canon, in my opinion. So I would prefer the Sony 70, 24 to 70, 2.8. But it is a thousand extra dollars, not a thousand dollars, a thousand extra dollars basically from this one. This one just came out and the ratings seem to be close enough that the Sony one is probably the, it's, it's going to have the best quality. It's slightly more lightweight. Mm, sure, I would like that one. You know, I like to go with the the manufacturer is the same as my camera, but a thousand extra dollars. I couldn't justify it this time. I had done that kind of thing in the past, but couldn't do it. Pretty neat case. And there's gonna be all kinds of videos to tell you all the specs all the details, the comparisons. This isn't the video for it. This is just my reasons for buying, my unboxing, my initial reaction. And my initial reaction is this thing is heavy. It is heavy. It is a noticeable item. The size of it is uh, like the width, circumference is not that bad, but it is heavy. Um, it has the zoom, it's going to extend from the front. It's not ideal, but the Sony one does the same thing. It's got the autofocus, manual focus. I think you got like a click. You can choose whether it clicks or doesn't click. I go back here. One of these two. Um, you got the 2.8, I don't even 
even sure what that one does. Set it on kind of auto for camera clicks. Clicks. Maybe it's a locking. There we go. Yeah, all it does is you can choose what clicks between the aperture ranges or not. And this looks to be a lock so it doesn't accidentally do it. I forget what these buttons are for. My Sony has it. And on the Sony, these things are prone to damage, as I found out on my last trip. And it has a big front element here, 82 millimeter. I always buy a lens uh, cover filter for everything, mainly to um, protect it. Because uh, I actually do use my stuff out in the field. Tripods crash, things fall, things hit against things. It's mainly the tripod crashing now. And uh, so I always, always uh, cover the front element. It's not bad. Let's try this thing on. Okay, there's my Sony camera. A7R5. Got the 50 millimeter, it's 1.2. So the aperture is gonna be much greater on this one. This is 2.8. I think the Sony equivalent is also 2.8. You can see the front buttons on this one took a beating. Uh, if you get this cleaned up with the manufacturer, which is a whole different video and process in itself. Yeah, the Sigma definitely feels heavier. I can look those specs up, but this is, this is heavier. Wow. Okay. Let's set this over here. These things are so expensive. Goes in okay. I always hated how you put the lenses on in the Sony. The Canon seemed much more easy. They don't always click in. You gotta like go back and forth. All right, all right. It's a heavy brick. Do we get some acknowledgement that it works? Yeah, they're okay, all right. It should have some ability to focus up close, some kind of macro function. I like that zoom. Focus, manual focus. Zoom that in. Cool. Well, it registers. Took some photos there. And put this back on for a bit. Got back in the box. And I bought this lens filter, UV filter, 82 millimeter, and I didn't buy the cheapest, and I didn't buy the most expensive either, and so you could argue that why did you just buy a $1,200 camera lens to put on a piece of glass, $30 piece of glass in front of it. I share the same concerns and I've done it with all my lenses, some high and low range filters. Uh, I haven't seen the a huge difference between the medium level expense, which is what I would call kind of between 25 and $75. So I know many of you people may laugh at that and then greater than $75 very light. The ones in the, you know, less than 20 are probably not worth it on this type of lens. Accidents happen. So 
So I'll deal with this. I'll, I'll have it on. Did it come with a lens hood? It did. Okay, so pretty standard lens hood. I'll leave that in here now. Lens hood is also another way to protect your expensive camera gear. Just the fact that you have it on gives it another level of protection. And the last thing you want is to have to replace or have to go through the repair process for your gear. And even worse, if you're on vacation and this is your main camera system and it's just broke, you know? So if you have a, a little bit of extra level of protection with this stuff, it's, it is helpful. The video should focus automatically as well. Oh, what is that? Well, it looks nice. I have to take some test photos and videos, obviously. It is a beast to carry. And I have to say, as iPhones continue to increase in quality, the reality of wanting to bring this becomes less and less, like special occasions type of gear or if I'm producing higher quality content. I'll pull this out, but this type of camera is definitely getting less used over time. So, I, but hands down, the quality between this and an iPhone 15 Pro camera, the Apple photos look great on the on the phone, but you put them on a big screen. Look how it all kind of mushes together with color. Hands down, this is far superior. So, all right, guys. So that's my take on it. More of a blog here than than any kind of camera gear video. But I'll let you know how this goes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.